morning, everybody, and uh, welcome back to the fifth conference, Small and Medium Wind. Um, today, we'll have to start with the sixth session about education. And I'm glad to welcome Mr. Sven Enevolsen uh, to give a speech of small wind turbine engineering using IEC. Sven, are you ready to go on? I sure am. Sure, good. Welcome. Thank you. I will go and share the screen and see if this one works. You can see me, right? You see you. you. See me, yes. But you can see the uh, posting, yeah. Okay, this is a 6.2 meter blade developed by me. And can I see that? We only see your uh, nice face. What can you see? Your face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, uh, no pictures of a blade or anything, as you mentioned. Oh, which page um, are you seeing? We are seeing no pages at all, only you. I have two screens. You've got two screens. You might have two screens. You might have two. Yeah, I have to select the window. Yeah, okay, this one. Okay. Working now? No, not yet. I've selected screen two. Can you see anything on uh, from my screen now? Or? No, not yet. Because I can see. Hmm. Okay, let me disconnect the uh, other screen. Oh, uh, now it's coming. Now it's coming. Small wind turbine engineering. Now did you? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I removed the other screen. Okay. So, but uh, now we see the whole PowerPoint, uh, maybe we should just give it a full screen. Yeah. So, that's much better. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. I gotta turn this one off. Minimize that one, right? Right. Okay. Can you also see the uh, small things here? What is the small things you're talking about? You can only see the presentation. We can see the presentation, only small wind turbine engineering, this picture, yes? Okay, good. I think it's the front page. Yeah, it's a 6.2 meter blade for the uh, Viking uh, 25 kilowatt turbine. Um, it's not the one that they are using uh, today, um, but uh, it's one that we developed back then. Okay, here's a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in the wind industry since 83. Uh, I founded my company, Ecology Management in 95, when I ended as uh, Director of Sales and Marketing in MyCon. Uh, I've lectured uh, all over the world in uh, wind energy and so on. And I'm still lecturing at um, the Energy and Climate Academy. Um, the dilemma for small wind is actually that the harshest competition they have is the uh, mistakes done by others and the fact that there's a lot of crap out there. Now, this one is a catalog from uh, 2014 issued by Folger Center, uh, and I know there's uh, 16 out there too, but the tendency is still the same. There's too much crap out there and uncertified things. Um, and the, um, oops, it is not that difficult to, uh, to do it correctly because if you look at the uh, international standards that are relevant to uh, wind turbine design, 
uh, we have on the mechanical and electrical side a lot of help that can guide us. And if you dig into the IEC 61400-2, you will also see that throughout there's a lot of good explanations to why it is the way it is. So you are helped a lot. Where you're not helped a lot is on the electrical side, but the electrical side um, typically also differs from country to country, depending on what kind of uh, utility and grid connection codes they have and so on. Uh, but when it comes to the uh, electrical safety features and so on, it's well described in the, the Dash 2 standard. Uh, and of course, referring to 21 and 25 and so on, um, on how it's done. But uh, in general, you get the whole thing from the Dash 2 standard. The governments are not exactly helping us uh, in where we want to go in the market because we have a number, this is in Europe, we have a number of uh, incentives uh, from different countries and they are not even requiring certification of the turbines. It's only Denmark, Spain, Sweden and United Kingdom that has uh, a requirement of certification of the individual turbine. Uh, if you go to Germany, there's a certification requirement of the tower or the structure, but not of the turbine uh, and so on. So the, the governments are actually supporting crap, which is not good for the market. Now, Mr. Uh, Bolotov uh, yesterday presented us with a absolute fantastic vertical axis uh, turbine uh, giving enormously high numbers and whatnot uh, on how fantastic it was and so on. That doesn't change the fact that when it comes to about 60% of the rotation, we don't know what's going on. We simply don't know what's going on from an aerodynamic perspective um, in a vertical axis. Whereas on a horizontal axis, typically with a three-bladed uh, rotor, two or three-bladed rotor, we know what's going on. We know what the profiles are up to. Uh, we can calculate the things uh, very sturdily. Uh, you see now uh, 15 megawatt turbines being designed, 100% theoretical. They put it up and it works exactly the way they uh, expected it to. Uh, so the technology is there when it comes to horizontal axis, but vertical axis, we still don't know. And I don't know if you uh, heard the discussion afterwards uh, yesterday where I asked him about how he was limiting the efficiency once we reached wind speeds above uh, nominal power. And he couldn't explain it. So um, I would not build that too much on that. And I will still keep my statement that I have yet to see a more than five kilowatt vertical axis turbine sustaining 400 full load hours or 4,000 full load hours. I haven't seen that yet. And the thing is, when it comes to clients, burnt child fears fire. We have a number of super clients out there like telecompanies, um, utilities that have uh, obligations uh, way out in the network uh, and so on. There's a lot of uh, good clients out there that really could um, finance and pay for the thing if not only they had already tried wind turbines and failed with it because they bought some crap. They went for the price. Okay, the market segments that we are looking at today is we have the luxury, which is basically the one that small wind is selling to today. But we also have the need 
market, the ones who actually need it more than others. And when we start looking at what's coming up uh, on the um, developing uh, countries and uh, developing economies, they are actually going up in electrification rate uh, and they are also going up in GDP. So the money will come. It's a matter of going in, requiring certification, requiring that the crap is attacked. And sorry, Mr. Bolotov, I don't know if you're participating today, but go get it certified by IEC. I doubt you can, but anyway, okay. So when we go back to the IEC standard, one of the things where I dash two uh, differs significantly on a mechanical scale from the dash one and the dash three is that you don't have to do fatigue calculations. You're welcome to do it if you want, but you don't have to because you can use a safety factor of 3.3 on stress. And if you do use that, you can see in the Verla curve that you are way out in numbers of uh, loads uh, in order to get to the point where fatigue matters. So as long as you stay at, uh, at a safety margin of 3.3 or higher, um, fatigue is not an issue for you in that. So if you understand these for simple formulas on axial load, bending, shear, and combined, um, and so on, on the blade root and the rotor shaft, then you are okay to go. If you don't understand these formulas, then hire somebody who does. It doesn't take more than a bachelor's degree to be able to understand these things. Um, so it's not necessarily expensive. And there's a lot of freelancers out there who can give you the help. Just to let you know the difference, uh, if you have, like in my book, I'm mentioning a 10 kilowatt turbine with a 3.85 meter blade, by the way, made out of uh, organic uh, fibers and so on. Um, the normal operation gives you a load of uh, 40 kilo at 2.7 meters out. That's not much, but that's not how we design the blade. The blade has to be designed for the extreme load, which is actually 22, 20 kilo uh, bags distributed over the blade. So the extreme load is something you have to go in and find. And it's, you're very helped in the dash two standard on how to calculate it. All the uh, load cases uh, are given, and it's not that many uh, that you have to uh, consider in it. Because we are, again, on the safe side when it comes to fatigue and so on. So, but there's one issue that you need to be very, very careful about. We have some turbines out there where they use, in order to um, reduce the efficiency, they furl the rotor, meaning that they simply put it out a yaw so it doesn't stand perpendicular to the wind direction. And this is how to ca you calculate, for instance, if it's 30 degrees out uh, of yaw. And this is if you are using uh, the furling uh, in order to. Um, reduce the power output, you simply double the loads on your um, main shaft. And you do that because you don't know enough about aerodynamics so that you are able to reduce the power uh, directly on the airfoil instead, which you should be doing. 
because then you kill it at the source. It's a lot better. Okay. When you start looking at catalogs for a generator, uh, one of the things that might tempt you is um, these uh, permanent magnet generators. And then you can save having a gearbox and so on. But one of the things that you should consider in this is that your uh, tip speed ratio is very important for the efficiency of your turbine. And typically it's something between four and six in tip speed ratio. And when you start looking at the rotational speed, optimum speed for the various uh, generators, there is none that fits perfectly in. So you cannot, uh, or it's very difficult to find an off the shelf permanent magnet generator that fits into an ideal rotor. So you probably will have to do your generator yourself or at least go into um, some kind of collaboration with somebody who can manufacture it. Okay, a few rules of thumb. If you want to make it uh, market competitive, you should go for about 200 to 250 watts per square meter swept area. Your tip speed should be something between 45 and 55 meters per second. Now that's a lot lower than what you see on large modern turbines, but it has a reason, a very good reason, because first of all, you have a lot of turbulence uh, in the uh, height that you typically are in. Uh, you have much more turbulence than what the big ones are seeing and so on. Secondly, noise is an issue because you are very near to the consumer, i.e. the house you want to electrify. The main shaft diameter is supposed to be above or equal to 1% of your rotor diameter. That also goes for megawatt size turbines. And what we're talking about the diameter here is the diameter at the first bearing. And you also have to acknowledge that this is counting for high grade steel. So if you are using softer steel, uh, you gotta increase the um, diameter. The old rule uh, made by Hillier Peterson back in the 70s of at that time 30 kiloton, but today 300 Newton per square meter acting two thirds radius out still flies. And it works fantastic when you are designing your uh, small wind turbine. I know that if you do a blade element calculation and all that, you may have a lot less load than you have on this one. But bear in mind that when you go out buying material, for instance, uh, a, a tube for a tower, uh, you may calculate um, the tower using uh, aerodynamics and so on. Uh, you may calculate the thickness of the tower steel to 4.2 and here you may end up in 5.2, but it doesn't matter because the standard tube that you can buy is six millimeter. So it's, uh, it's always a matter of price and going for the uh, standard sizes and so on, which goes a lot better uh, when you, and it's a liberty you have when you're making small turbines in design. <coughs> Another thing, uh, again, talking about the tip speed ratio and so on, uh, the sound pressure will increase with the fifth power of speed of the blade relative to the surrounding air. And also you should consider that most profile have optimum lift angle of 12 to 14 degrees. Now it all depends on what profile you choose. Okay. 
the loads on the main shaft increase with the cube of the rotor diameter. The bending strength of the shaft increase with the cube of the shaft diameter. Now by this, we go back to what I said before, the uh, diameter of the main shaft uh, is 1% of the rotor diameter. So it is proportional. Okay, and here is the uh, 300 Newton per square meter um, shown more graphically. Um, the um, force on, on top is what adds to the tower loads. The force in the middle uh, is what adds to the yaw loads, except for free yaw. But if you have free yaw, you get some other problems. Um, and uh, the um, down force uh, is when it adds to uh, the main shaft bending. Uh, and basically that's the three points that you should calculate the uh, 300 Newton per square meter on. And it's all with two third uh, radius out. Here's some useful links, uh, airfoil tools, where you can go in and uh, find an airfoil that suits uh, the way you plan on manufacturing and so on. The Q-Blade made by the University of Berlin is fantastic. Uh, you can uh, calculate uh, the aerodynamics very easily uh, on that one uh, and so on. Um, and then there are some uh, standards and some business manuals and some stuff uh, that may help you uh, get to what you need. There's also something on how to get it certified and so on. And if you want to have it all combined in one uh, session, I can recommend my little book, which is available at uh, amazon.com. But my message is the government should require certification. And by governments, I mean the ones who wants to subsidize in order to turn green in their policy, but certainly also the uh, grid code or grid companies should also require the certification. The certification is not a guarantee, but it's certainly an important step in the right direction. Thank you. I'm available for questions. Thank you, Sven. Very interesting and a very good uh, uh, speech there. Uh, are there any questions for Sven? Ben, I, uh, congratulations on a very good uh, presentation. Uh, you, I Mike. just want to, I just want to uh, comment that we do require certification in the U.S. as well, and we've been promoting that for quite a few years, and and uh, that's because we have plenty of crap in America as well. I know. And I also know that you have been doing a very hard work on uh, setting up the uh, certification requirements and so on. And I really appreciate your work on that. Thank you. Yeah. Other comments or questions? Comments are welcome as well. Uh, Sven, this is Brent Somerville. Thanks for the good presentation starting us off today. Um, I, I agree there are good tools and available to the designer. Um, what is it that we're missing? What if, if we could um, if we could have a, a better tool to do a better job these days, uh, where do you think the, the main needs are? Well, I think... Um... Uh, David Wood uh, actually uh, worked on it a, a bit by uh, setting up a scenario where you had the simple load model, um, where we had this um, Excel file uh, where you simply just punched in uh, the things and you were immediately told if, uh, if you were on the right track, uh, 
with uh, your dimensions and uh, steel types, etc. Uh, that helped a bit, um, but uh, I, I don't know how we can make it easier because I'm not sure we should make it easier uh, to design a turbine. Now, if, if we if we go back on uh, on wind studies uh, back in the old days, when if you didn't know how to uh, work with a Fortran program uh, and hence the WASP uh, program directly, uh, then you couldn't do a wind study. Then came the interface made by EMD called WinPro. And all of a sudden, any clerical worker could uh, come up with a nice printed report on five or six pages that looked professional. Um, and that uh, also took away uh, some of the uh, seri seriousness, I would say, uh, on doing wind studies because all of a sudden everybody could do it. But that does, didn't mean that everybody made good wind studies, right? So I'm afraid that we can get the same situation if we do it so that it's too simple. To, to get to it, because one of the things that I've been considering was to make kind of a, uh, a database where you could go in, if I use a rotor of this size, what should my shaft be? What should the bearings be? And uh, what's my ideal generator and so on and so on. Something like the, the one I showed you on the um, tip speed ratio and generator size and so on. An RPM, but um, there's a limit to how uh, you can do it, especially when you get uh, people like Bolotov coming up with uh, uh, what is to save the humankind uh, on energy for the future. Um, and we know it's crap, right? And by the way, he also has patents, but if you look at the most famous patent uh, law firm in uh, Kazakhstan is Bolotov and company. It's a law firm. So, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> okay, thanks, Sven. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Sven. Uh, I'm sure that we can continue uh, questions and comments uh, later on today, but. Uh...